Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to uh, another episode of the Bitcoin Podcasts, Just the Headers. I'm going to turn it over to Jesse. Hey everybody, I'm back, back from Mexico, did a lot of crazy things in Mexico, not really, but uh, I'm back now and we are ready to record a great show about the headlines in crypto for you guys. Mm Mm-hmm. We're back. We're both back from our travel destinations. But uh, yep. yours was a lot more exotic than mine. <laughs> do you, do we consider Mexico exotic at this point? They're just our neighbors, right? I think if you go south enough, maybe. Did yeah. you go to Mazatlan? Uh, I don't know where that is geographically relative Neither to where I, I went. Neither do I, so it's okay. <laughs> but I did go pretty far south. <laughs> did you go to the Yucatan Peninsula? I don't know, man. I don't know the geography of Central America and Just think anything of the shape. below our border. Think of the shape in your mind's eye, and you'll think of Mex- and you'll see Mexico. Dude, I didn't even to. know that Mexico had a bunch of states. Like, Mexico is almost like the U.S. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that. Oh, I mean, yeah. every almost like every country is is like that. Is it though? Yeah, man. It, is it, <laughs> is <laughs> it? Are we getting philosophical here? Is it, man? No, really. No, like South yeah. Korea, right? South Korea doesn't have states. It's just South Korea. You've got cities, but you don't have like states. Yeah, but South Korea is Some... itty bitty. That's what I'm saying, though. Some countries are just not big enough, and I guess Mexico is big enough to have states. And if some the people call pie, them provinces. If the not pizza states. pie is too large, you got to cut it up to share it with somebody, man. But it's not. It, actually, it's pretty big. Yeah. What, South Korea? No, no, in Mexico. Yeah, Mexico is big. It's a big place. Yeah. The U.S. is a very big place. The Euro- Europe is a big place. I wonder where they do a lot of the automotive assembling in the in Mexico. I like most cars are assembled. I'd say it's not too far from the southern border. That'd be mm. my first bet. I didn't know that there was a Porsche plant south of the airport, like I guess ten minutes. Damn. In Atlanta. Yeah, Mexico is a hot spot to get stuff built on the low. Mm. But anyways, um, so for those of you, this is your first time hearing uh, the Bitcoin podcast, just the headers. This is a show where Jesse and myself, Demetric or D, uh, we go over the headlines that we kind of found interesting that caught our eye from the last weekend to now when you're hearing this, um, which should be a Friday if we're getting it out on time. Last week's was late, but I've been traveling, so cut me some slack. Um yeah, we're just going to hop right into it. You ready, Jesse? Let's do it. Do you have a do you have a niece or nephew? I have a lot of nieces and nephews. Why? Wait, you're not the you are not the oldest. That's right cuz they call you Uncle Jesse like from um uh, like from Full House. Well, I have like hundreds of nieces and nephews. Mm, this seems like a cultural thing that I might not understand. Oh, okay. Never mind. I see what you're trying to say. Okay. Um, do you direct do? Because nieces how do you have nephews. hundreds of nieces and nephews? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm thinking like second cousins having children, and then those are considered nieces and nephews. Oh, but okay. I do that too. Probably not so the same. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like, um,. I, I mean, think, like, direct nieces and nephews. Okay, yeah, let me think. I still have a few, but not a hundred. Like, maybe, like, 30. Well, that's... 
that doesn't matter. I just wanted to know if they call you Uncle Jesse. Like, oh, are you, do you wear black leather jackets around them and sing? Why would I wear black leather? That's what Uncle. That's what oh, Uncle Jesse. we're talking Full House. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna go along. We're just gonna get this show cracking. No, so, no, 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 no. But that's who you're referencing, right? Yeah, yeah, Uncle okay. Jesse. Uh, wait, wait. Do Do you know about the Fonz? Yeah, I know about the Fonz. Okay, I didn't know about hey, the Fonz until a few days. He does the points. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. From Happy Days, I never watched that. You kind of have the hair. You could be Uncle Jesse Kasopoulos. I don't think so. Hold on, let me let me Google that. Man, <laughs> before you cut your hair, when I first met you, you had hair and it was doing things. Oh whoa. Yeah. I think you could rock it, man. Uh, I don't know about that. Come on, man. Be Asian Uncle Jesse Whoa. for everybody. Asian Uncle <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's Dude, a mullet. That's a, be, that's a real mullet. That could be your crypto persona, Uncle Jesse of crypto. No, can I like can I rock his like later haircut cuz like do it doesn't look like feel, a mullet. Man. In the words of Zeke Elliott, you're a grown ass man. But the thing is, would it still be considered Uncle Jesse from Full House if I don't have the mullet? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, as long as you call yourself <laughs> Uncle Jesse and your name is Jesse and you are an uncle, I feel like you can really identify with this persona. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> what is that noise? That's like, I a, don't know. I really I don't, don't want to do that noise. Yeah, okay. that's pretty much. Okay, um, let's get into this news for everybody listening. So, um, the first article is from January 11, 2019. It's written by Lubomir Tasev. It has 1,424 eyeballs. Um, it's uh, Bitcoin.com, so there could be a little slant to it. A Roger Ver slant. Um, but anyways... <laughs> The Daily. Uh, so this is going to be a few a few stories. Boom, boom, bam. Critical bug found in Beam Wallet. And also YRX adds another cryptocurrency. So I've never heard of Beam Wallet. There's lots of wallets. Um, in fact, at one point I had 15 different wallets. Um, just testing them so I could talk about wallet functionality and whatnot. I got tired of doing that. But uh, the developers of Beam, a new privacy-centric coin based on the Mimblewimble protocol, have found a critical vulnerability in their Beam Wallet. Um, the bug affects all previously released wallets in both the desktop and the CLI version. The company behind the project announced on Twitter. Uh, the problem has been fixed and Beam said in a post on Medium, it's, it's currently working with providers to upgrade their systems. So long story short there, uh, you're going to want to, if you're using Beam Wallet, you're going to want to tap in, get locked in, get an update and fix your shit because uh, you don't want your money being sent to La La Land. And not the cool La La Land, like uh, the one with uh, Emma Emma Stone and uh, what's his name, Jake Gyllen. I never Jake. watched that movie. Was it good? Is it Jake Gyllen? No, not Jake. I always get Jake Gyllenhaal and the other sharp-looking Caucasian guy mixed up. The one, uh, the Describe one with the face. Every white actor, male actor. Yeah, in you know the one with the face. He's got the face. He's got the face. Um. He was in uh, Blade Runner. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Wait, no, that's no, that's, no, that's no, another no, no. guy with the face, no, right? You know what Blade, I'm Blade saying? Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I haven't seen that movie. In a long he looks time. like a short Ryan Reynolds. Maybe they could be related. Don't Google it. I I hear you googling. No, I have to. Is it really Harrison <laughs> Ford? No. Well, Harrison Ford was in it. The original Blade Runner. Yeah, and he was in the Are we talking too. 1982 or 2049? 2049. Oh, okay. I never watched that one, I don't think. Anyways, let's get on with the YRX ad support for Waves. So Waves is going to the YRX wallet. Um, here's another. Belarusian traders migrate from Binance to Exmo. So Exmo is a new exchange. Um, I kind of feel like every exchange that is the least regulated and comes up that's new is going to have an automatic bootstrap user base of people that don't feel to uh, trade uh, in a regulated environment. I know that 
people are like, why wouldn't I want that? But a lot of people don't. So moving on. So speaking of Ryan Gosling, by the way, Ryan Gosling, that's his name. He's got the face, man. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, let's keep it moving. This article uh, written January 11th as well. Overstock security token trading platform. Oh, sorry. This is written by Molly Jane Zuckerman from Cointelegraph. Uh, has 3,931 total views, so not the most we've seen, but whatever. I'd be happy if my thing got seen 3,900 times, whatever the thing was. Oh, wait, that does happen, but I mean, article, my article got read that many times. Anyways, Overstock Security Token Trading Platform to Give Investors Control Over Token holdings so the security token uh exchange subsidiary of e-commerce retail giant overstock t0 which stands for like trading day zero because usually things go to t3 or t2 or t3 that's a long story but has started releasing control of its tokens according to a letter to investors relate released on january 11th last august the subsidiary had announced that its security token offering would close having raised 134 million out of the maximum amount of 250 million previously specified in june 2018 t0 had also signed a letter with with uh investment company gsr capital for the purchase of 160 million in t0 security tokens according to t0 ceo sam norsalehi mm, not good with these names um uh, Investors now have the option of choosing where to hold their security tokens, either by creating a brokerage account with Dinosaur Financial Group. (laughs) Why would you name your financial group Dinosaur Financial Group? That just is so funny to me. Like I'm picturing like little T-Rexes and those green hats, but they can't type because their arms are so tiny. So all they do is roar predictions. I'm sorry. I tried to I tried to lock it in, Jesse. Do you who do you think are the C suite at Dinosaur Financial Group? Is it the pterodactyls or the Velociraptors? Velociraptors, definitely. So? I mean Jurassic World told us that Velociraptors are the best. <laughs> so is anything I know from crazy weird marketing, Velociraptors can develop language and i learned that from jurassic park 3 yeah i'm googling dinosaur whatever financial group. <laughs> why what are you looking to know i know actual dinosaurs are not running it you don't have to no i just want to know who's financing it that's so funny who's running the who's who, Who's running an accounting over there? Is it the Stegosaurus? You want to know what my favorite dinosaur is, Jesse? Mm, what's your favorite dinosaur? It's called the Demetrodon. Mm. It's a real dinosaur. It's not, It's a. I didn't just make that up. It's a real dinosaur called the Demetrodon. And when I was mm. a kid, you know, back when science is just fun, mm-hmm. I, w- I learned about it. And I was like, obviously, that's going to be my favorite dinosaur forever. It's got my name in it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty chill too. It has a sail on its back to soak in sun. It's like a solar, it's a solar powered dinosaur. Mm. It's it's dope. But anyways, I got. A little hey, you want to hear an interesting article? I think I do. Let me let me just dig through this real quick. Okay. Let me power read. Power read. Power read. Ooh, I just saw a little bitty thing on the side here law enforcement requests to shapeshift rose 175 percent in the second half of 2018 hashtag that's why they do kyc and aml all over there now because old eric Voorhees thought he was gonna get himself sued into oblivion so all right here we go mm-hmm. here's a juicy part of this article i think give me the juice squeeze it um <clears throat> Meanwhile, emerging market bond market participants familiar with Venezuelan debt said there was no effective secondary market for the bonds in question, which were first issued by the state-owned oil company PDVSA 
in mm-hmm. 2014 and held entirely by the country's central bank until recently. Goldman, this is Goldman Sachs, paid mm-hmm. 31 cents on the dollar for the bonds, which mature in October 2022, Borges' letter said. At that price, the bonds would yield more than 40% compared with their stated coupon of 6%. Goldman acquired the bonds from, guess who? Dinosaur Financial Group. Yep. Oh my goodness. Pepe Silvia's back in the house, Jesse. A person answering the phone at Dinosaur's New York office said the firm had no comment on the matter. Opposition lawmakers said they wanted to investigate intermediaries in the deal. Quote, we're going to put a magnifying glass on this financial middleman, this small company called Dinosaur, who is behind it. What power does it have? Uh, Said lawmaker Carlos Valero before the vote. Um, So I wonder if it's like state sponsored like this this little um financial holdings group and is like designed to like transfer venezuelan debt out of the company or out of the country wait so dinosaur financial group is a middle that's what it looks like it's a middleman for selling bonds from the venezuelan central bank to goldman sachs that's what this article is about so did we just stumble upon something nice all right, listeners, if you're listening, I don't know how unlazy you guys are, but Dinosaur Financial Group is up to some shit. And I think Pepe Silvia is there. And I think maybe if we just pull on some threads, we can unravel it. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to put anybody to call to action like that. But I would like to know what's going on because that seems a little bit shady. Don't, don't you think, Jesse? <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is very shady. I love how, like, the more powerful you are, the more guarantees you get. Like, Goldman's like, oh, let me buy these bonds at 31 cents on the dollar. And guess what? When they hit a dollar a few years from now, I make buku money. Great. 40% in three years. That's pretty good. Jeez, Louise. 40% in three years? Do you just divide that by three? So that'd be 40 by three. One point. Anyways, I don't want to do math like that. <laughs> I don't want to do math like thirteen percent. Yeah. Uh, thirteen point three three percent, sir. Mm-hmm. Yep. Three three repeating. Put the bar over it. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, I wonder if um, that's what our banks do a lot. What do you mean? I'm just not familiar with like how money works how money flows how debt is accumulated how debt is sold especially like debt from countries yeah i don't think so it's interesting if you if we had somebody who was familiar with like how especially at least maybe specifically a country like venezuela who's trying to get rid of a lot of debt it'd be interesting to have somebody who's um well versed in and how that works that can kind of shed some light on what's going on here because on the surface, to somebody who's ignorant like me, mm-hmm. it looks pretty shady. But maybe if I understood what was actually going on, it would be less shady. That an American bank is purchasing um, debt of a foreign country that is specifically from a state-owned oil company. I don't know, man. It's just careful, man. I'm not trying to get assassinated. We got to be careful. That's why right, I let's go to the next call article. to action to the listeners. We've got to decentralize the threats. We got to, if we start <laughs> unraveling <laughs> shit, I don't want them to come to like, who is this Jesse and D dude? Are they murderable? It looks mm-hmm. like they are. Let's take them out on a Wednesday while they're at the shopping mall. <laughs> oh, that would suck. <laughs> that would be terrible. Yeah. I'm, Sorry. I'm definitely not interested in that. Yeah. I once A wise man once told me, never put yourself in a position to where you're in the at the cusp of like negative power and i was like what do you mean by that he was like well if you're a lawyer like don't go lawyering for super rich banks or something because you could think one day that you're just lawyering and then the next day you're straight up getting your neck cut open by like a drug lord and i was like what and he was like yeah and like if you're going to be a doctor like a fancy doctor don't be a doctor that works on baddies. Like, try and get a good gig working on athletes or something. And I was like, that makes sense. I don't ever want to get into the bad world. 
what that I know exists. You know? Yeah. But anyways, speaking of shitty things, Tron can't handle oh, hey, its... Oh, hey, 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 huh? hey, hey, hey. What? You can't, you can't transition like that on Tron. <laughs> <laughs> some okay. people still have some Tron. <laughs> I have Tron. I oh, okay. know what it is, though. I mean... I know when well, I'm holding bad baseball cards, <laughs> like from the dude named uh, Jimmy Jimmy Smith, the second string baseball player for the Colorado Rockies in 1981. And if you're playing second string in baseball, mm, hate to break it to you. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. I don't. I don't play second string anything. But, um, anyways, this this article is written by Lubomir Tasev. Lub Lub Lubomir. Uh, it has 5,993 eyeballs. It's written Bitcoin.com. Tron can handle BitTorrent's transaction volume. Former exec claims. No shiite. S- Simon Morris, uh, who was BitTorrent's chief strategy officer until July 2018, has expressed his doubts about the capability of the Tron blockchain to process the vast number of transactions that the popular file sharing platform will demand. Morris believes there's more marketing than technology behind the launch of the new crypto token. <gasps> you don't say. More marketing than tech? This is... <laughs> I'm blown away by that statement. BTT transactions will melt Tron's blockchain. BTT transactions stands for BitTorrent. Uh, BitTorrent. Bit, BitTorrent. You gotta say both of those T's. BitTorrent is plan. <laughs> wow. What? That's pretty good. Bit, bit to torrent. Hey, can you like beatbox? I think I can. Give me a second. Okay, I got it now. I got my rhythm now. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna do that. That's embarrassing. I mean, the the teas were pretty good. Sounded like a, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good snare, right? Or not snare, but like a closed hi hat sound. No, I just sound like a sampling machine. Anyways, I'm trying to read Jesse. Stop just trying. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Bitcoin is planning to become one of the first projects to offer its coin on Binance Launchpad, a platform developed by the leading cryptocurrency exchange to facilitate fundraising. The upcoming launch of BitTorrent token, a digital coin based on the Tron protocol, has delighted Tron investors who saw the price of TRX jump from around $0.02 to $0.03 in the week following the announcement. Uh, It has since dropped to almost its previous level of $0.02. So... Here is uh, a a, a quote. The transactional capacity we were looking at was needing hundreds of transactions a second just to get started. It's simply not there. You hear all the bullshit out there. Oh, this does 10,000. This is a quote. Oh, this does 10,000 transactions a second. It's all crap. We're going to Meltron. Literally destroy it. Damn. Damn. Anyways, I don't even uh, know how the Tron token is supposed to work with with BitTorrent. Like, do you even know? Um, say what? Do you even know how Tron tokens are acquired by torrenting on BitTorrent? Uh, I do not know because I don't think that you can acquire them on BitTorrent. Like, if you if you successfully download and see a file. Do you get like a token? Like, I wonder what their system is, because maybe they could do like a system where there's less like necessary. There's a there's a smaller need for the number of transactions. Anyway, never mind. We'll go to Monday. I hear that sigh. So Bitcoin.com. No, IBM's quantum computer won't break Bitcoin. Written by Samuel Haig with five thousand two hundred fifty one eyeballs. Oh, this is interesting. IBM's commercial launch of its new quantum computing system has fueled reports claiming that the technology may spell doom for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Um, the Q system 
One uses IBM's 20 qubit chip with a company claiming that the unit is, quote, designed for commercial use. At launch, Arvind Krishna, the director of IBM Research, described the system as, quote, critical in expanding quantum computing beyond the walls of the research lab as we work to develop practical quantum applications for business and science. Oh, this is exciting. It is. Not that exciting. There's something that, I mean, we've been saying this for years, literally saying for years that quantum computing is not going to threaten cryptocurrency. Well, they're at, a, they're at a 20 qubit chip. Last I heard, it was like a company in Canada that was at like, I forget, like eight or six or something like that, eight or four. But that's pretty cool. IBM's at 20. I don't know. What does that mean for me? I like computers. I built my computer. I've been building computers for a while. What's yeah. a cube? What's a what did you say? How many qubits? Yeah, what's a qubit right chip in comparison to a like I don't know eight core processor? So like a calculator, like a really dumb calculator that can only add and subtract. Mm -hmm. You could do that. You could do that with like a like an eight bit um, ALU. So you'd have like an eight bit processor, and each bit you know either holds a one or a zero. Mm -hmm. um, and then the more the more um, computational instructions you want it to be capable of you have to expand the functionality of the alu and alu is just an acronym standing for arithmetic logic unit and so okay. this 20 qubit system um it, uh, one qubit is different than a bit in the way that i guess a qubit can either uh hold a one a zero or like some statistical probability of like a one and a zero happening um so you can have like a fuzzy value um so it just it um, exponentially expands the the um number of values you can um store yeah so if you have three options versus two options trinary instead of binary mm -hmm. so um but then are there yeah. in aren't there an infinite many there's infinite many dimensionality right so if we're still stuck at binary and having a real tough time digesting trinary. What happens when we add a four? I don't think this is truly trinary though, because it's not a trinary system. It's um, I it's been a while since I I've looked at like any text regarding um like actually how qubits work, um. But from what I remember, which may be incorrect, but um, it's not really a one zero or a third option. It's like a lot of different options because you can store different percentages of the possibility of one or zero happening. So it's like more than three options, but that may be incorrect. This but... would be an interesting conversation to have with Corey. He literally did his dissertation on this, I think, this stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's like it was super new when I was in school. Nobody was able to like actually have a um, a single digit qubit system working for a while. So that's yeah. interesting. I think at one point I was like in there in Corey's offices uh, when we were in school, and he was like trying to build this like text prediction software as like a homework assignment. And it had something to do with quantum states because, you know, like if someone types a D, then the next letter could be a bunch of options, right? Sure. Right. And so you finally whittle it down. So all text prediction is, is like, uh, I guess you could call it machine learning if you want to, but it's just like statistical probabilities of what letters coming next based on mm -hmm. how many words, you know, and all that stuff. So I was like, man, this is really cool stuff, man. Well, but anyway. there's there's yeah there's a lot of different types of machine learning Pretty but yeah most of them are are like basically a nth dimensional probability function <laughs> i saw this like uh you know everybody on social media is doing the 10 year challenge mm -hmm. no. and then i saw like what's that like the basic equation of statistics y equals uh something x plus uh i think it's epsilon 
it's basically a uh, slope intercept form of a line like mx plus b but for specific statistics you use i think it's like beta x plus epsilon or something i can't okay. remember it was many moons ago but then they had the same equation y equals like beta times x plus epsilon and then it was like in 2009 it was like statistics and then they had the same equation next to it same equation next to it it was like 2019 machine learning and i was like oh wow that's funny that's wait a machine, machine learning like what was it was just the same equation for statistics yeah but 10 years ago we called it statistics and 10 years later we now call it machine oh learning. oh yeah. so gotcha that was, i thought it was cute yeah. Yep. Speaking of cute, I did that transition for you because the next article I see it and now you have to say it. Okay. Um, let me see. Mm-hmm. Winklevoss twins believe uh, stable coins. All right, go ahead. Wait, go ahead. I don't get it. Because I made you say the Winklevoss twins are cute. And they're dudes, so. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to what you said before. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm sad. Winkle Boss Twins believe stable coins tokenize securities are future of crypto innovation. This article is written by Mary Houlette for Cointelegraph. 4,668 total views and 208 total shares. Um, What is this about? Okay. All right. Well, it's pretty much in the title then, I guess. So everybody think stable coins are going to be the next um wave of um where the money's going to go what people are going to invest in there's a few articles that i saw in our um news bank um saying the same thing um so i guess there's really not much here besides that i, I did see some uh, additional articles um going over audits of uh, existing stable coins to verify mm-hmm. that they they did have um, fiat to back them up, so we'll uh, see. St- stable coins one feels oxymoronic, two seems like such a slippery slope. <coughs> like it, it's just what? So you so you and your rich friends get a giant pile of money together and then tokenize that giant pile of money and make promises that people probably won't cash in on because they feel like they can trade with your promises. In a highly efficient way. But if it ever comes down to them not being able to trade in a highly efficient way, they're going to cash out those promises and they can only hope that your giant pile of money is there to back your tokenized promise. If you were like the best marketer in the world, how would you go about perfectly marketing a coin to become truly decentralized? Like Bitcoin is, I guess, the the gold standard on on um, its decentralization. But how would you go about artificially inducing that same sort of well, I think, distribution? I think the best, um, like sometimes the, when the path is something to convoluted, you go a different path to get to the same endpoint. Like, I literally mean that if you mean that physically, like if you're walking or you're hiking on a trail and you say, I want to get to that point on the mountain, but I can't go straight. You got to kind of go there. You got to kind of go around and eventually you can get there. There's probably going to be a route to take. And so I think the best marketers get people to what they're trying to do without the people knowing that they're doing it. Like, for instance, um, Apple and these cell phone companies had to release the security updates, but it would be really lame if you were like, download this update for your security. So what do they do? They make new emojis and they make everybody get really ants in the pants for these new emojis that they can use when they sneak the security update in there. Mm. Right. So if I were going to market like decentralization as important, I wouldn't focus on any of the technical stuff that people don't really care about or don't need to know. I would just give them something fun to do. That you could only do with the token. That you could only do by being on that peer-to-peer network. Like BitTorrent works, right? BitTorrent works great and it's a peer-to-peer network. Um, but people are just trying to steal movies and software. <laughs> right? <laughs> like it's like it's a great incentive. It's like, hey, I'll let you steal a little bit of this movie for me, 
if you let me steal a little bit of this movie from you. Well, what about um, what about um, Crypto Kitties? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of fun. It ride it rode the high of crypto at the time, but it was really cute and fun. It was, and one, it really spoke to the inner Tamagotchi generation that that I am. I had a Tamagotchi. I had a Digimon. I was like, these things are dope. My Tamagotchi's the best. It's unique. It poops. I clean it, but it only poops a few times a day. My friends poops all the time. So if somebody tasked you and they said, "Hey, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a billion, I'm gonna give you a billion dollars or a mm-hmm. billion of this crypto," mm-hmm. and there the supply is like twenty five billion, so you're getting a chunk of money regardless. If mm-hmm. you complete the task of de- like completely decentralizing this this token. How would you go about doing it? Well, like first, what are the metrics around sense. decentralization? Like, I need to have some sort of goal line. So you can look at Bitcoin and try to emulate that. How would you get it to the adoption and decentralization of Bitcoin? Hmm. I feel like a game would be the best route to take. Which is why a lot of these gaming companies are taking that route. Or let me see. I mean, it's a difficult question because, I mean, if you can answer that question, then all you have to do is just make a token. Yeah, if I could answer rich. that question, I I don't know. Maybe if I could, like, breed something digital. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think there has to be some sort of gamification to it. So... Or past trying to use something that should be used as money for the purpose of financial transaction. We have to gamify it. Well, everything is gamified. Even I mean, game theory even goes into just money itself. Hmm. But everybody, this is the thing. This is the, I think it's a plague of where we live now. I hate to get off to off subject, off subject. But we started with a very clear focus of making digital money, and we so quickly lost our attention span for that and jumped to we can decentralize anything and i am still questioning that major sentiment change Hmm. i agree because the reason i question that major sentiment change is because money is important and extreme it tells an extreme tale of history and at one point in history, during this last decade, we had a chance to totally rewrite the book. But we kind of lost track of that because the task got difficult. And then people were like, well, let's just not worry about money. Let's decentralize co- computer processing. Like, let's decentralize Amazon Web Services. Let's do that. And and then I think things kind of got kooky. But the ultimate marketing question of the day is maybe it's already existent. Like Bitcoin still has the precedent that no central entity owns it or controls it. So that naturally gives you as a human the 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 notion that, oh, I can try to own this and control this. And when I see like whenever people can't, they fork it, right? Like Roger Ver and his, you know, cohorts tried to own and control and they couldn't. And there's so many people trying to own and control Bitcoin all the time because the natural incentive of you're going to get paid is there. And that's what keeps decentralizing is every new like even the hash rates coming back up. Every single time people realize like, oh, I can't own and control this and they back out, a new person steps in with that natural greed. So but in games, the- games die, though. So if Bitcoin is really just a game at heart, um, it has a shelf life. And there's going to be a point where the the market cap value, the amount of money that's in it is going to have dwindled to not much. Mm. 
I want to sit in on like a game th- econom econ game theory class. Right. Me too. You know but like I mean? everything like that holds so this this it, this um abstraction that we refer to as like value, like mm-hmm. intermediate in, an intermediary value. Um, you know, whether it's paper money or coins or shells or rocks or whatever, like gold and it it all loses its value. Like it all has a peak at some point and then something depending new comes out. upon the functionality of the world that it lives in and that's why bitcoin seems so great right like well everything's but there, yeah uh-huh. the, the world's always changing and like so what's to say that like and and i guess uh i wonder what time scale we're at because that's really what matters um if if you if the world is accelerating at a pace where um the value of Bitcoin is coming and then is going to be going just as fast as it came. Like paper money lasted how long? Like thousands of years, hundreds Um, of years. I don't know. I think it's been hundreds of years now, not thousands. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd have to double check on that, but well, but yeah, you know, you see what I'm saying though? Like it depends on like what, keep going, what speed we're, we're moving forward as a society at that determines, I guess the, Largely oh, the time right. scale 17th, that Bitcoin... 17th century. 17th century? No, it was actually... No, thousands. You're right. Paper bills were first used by the Chinese who started yeah, carrying folded money Chinese. during the Tang Dynasty mm-hmm. uh, AD yep. 618 through 907. Yeah. So... Uh, At least a thousand years we've yeah. been doing paper. Um, so so I guess, yeah. So it depends on like what time scale we're, we're evolving as a society. Like, if we if we if we somehow like agree that we like the decentralization factor of bitcoin but then we want to find some new technology that increases its throughput if ripple becomes truly decentralized or something like that which you know like like uh if the transaction speed of ripple even though it's centralized could become decentralized you know that would be the new technology that's mm-hmm. where everybody should go um but since it's not, since it's really centralized, that's where people aren't going. Um, so I guess, yeah, it, it depends on how fast everything's moving forward. That determines like the potential value of, of what Bitcoin can be mm-hmm. or any crypto, or this new form of money. So I don't, I don't know. It's just a question to kind of like yeah. evoke some sort of discussion about what people people's perspectives on the world are i don't know it just it would just be interesting it's, it's very fascinating that's that's what i like so much about cryptocurrency and bitcoin is that when you start to peel away the layers of superficiality it gets down to some really really thought-provoking questions and when you think about the future and what is to come um you can clearly see a world that will benefit from a currency that just works wherever you go. But I don't think humanity's there yet. I think we always bite off a little more than we can chew. Also, we do that for no reason at all. Like, there was literally no reason for us to go to the moon. We all know yeah. the political and the military the military um, uh, motivations. We, we for wanted doing to beat it. Russia. Yeah, for, for doing it. But why but is that true though is that true that we just wanted to beat russia to the moon i mean that was a main because that was a war contributor i mean for science's sake yes let's go up there and let's measure the dust and see what it's all about i get that but what so what i'm what i'm saying is like we we do all these things for no reason but there's some great byproducts of doing the things and but there's a lag in between when we do the thing and how the technology really propagates through society, right? Like, okay, flight travel, um, traveling by plane. It's more prolific now than it's ever been, but really dig down and dig, what percentage of the population is actually exercising flight travel, actually using it? I guarantee it's not a super duper large percent of the population that is like flying frequently. I'm actually interested in that statistic. What is that? I wonder. And 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 in the same vein of what you're talking about, like we, you're right. We got to the moon and back, yeah. but we haven't gone to the moon since. Since. <laughs> so it's like, 
we can look the, at it really the well. The time scale, the time scale of space travel yeah. with 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 the time scale of which our society is evolving <laughs> is like we're not going to ever go back to the moon for a while, yeah. it seems. I just love how humanity works sometimes with our like we build telescopes and we're like, God, these telescopes are awesome. But every once in a while, these fucking clouds get in the way. How about we just put a telescope on top of the clouds? And they're like, you know what? That's a fucking genius idea. Let's do it. And you Boom, can only have that telescope. if people aren't fighting. Yeah. Because um, wars set us back and you need a lot of extra capital for for science like that to happen. For That's very true. Yeah, anyway. Um, I don't know. Very, very at depth. So, one, that is an interesting statistic. statistic. You're absolutely right. Let, me, let people, me Google that. But people just take for granted these technological leaps and never actually apply them. Like, you got, we were paying people hand over foot to go from the East Coast to the West Coast at some point because it took years you know it took a long time it took months it took months right and it was dangerous fucking dysentery oregon trail in this bitch like it was tough but now you can go from east coast to west coast by car in less than a week by plane in a day Here, you want to you want to see the numbers? Or yeah, the numbers? yeah. Do we have any numbers on this? So for the u.s. How many people fly domestically in the u.s. each day? Um, 1.73 million passengers are flying per day. A total of 631,939,829 passengers boarded domestic flights in the U.S. in the year 2010. Say that. Not, say that again. How many? 632 million, basically. If you round, you round up. 632 million. 32 million. And that's in that's day. in 2010. Yeah, uh, in in the span of a year, in the year of uh, in the year twenty ten. So, how many people? It's it's one one point seven three million people flying every day, and that that is from twenty ten. So, I don't know if it's increased. The numbers have increased or decreased. Um, now, but so... there are definitely a lot of people uh, on average every day. This is globally. More than 8 million people fly. In 2013, total passenger numbers were 3.1 billion, surpassing the 3 billion mark for the first time ever. That number is expected to grow to 3.3 billion in 2014, equivalent to 44% of the world's population. And that was a statistic given in 2013. Yeah. So So I guess what I'm saying is, is like, we saw how quickly the United States were was connected when we got that highways, that freeway system, and you could get from, you know, Texas to Missouri in a day, and you could, you know, you see what that does. It 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 closes the world. It makes the world smaller, right? So if the number of people that are flying is growing, and someone can realize, you know, hey, that's a hundred and sixteen years later, though, yeah, since the inception a, of the airplane. So just a, imagine if Bitcoin is it. Like, it's got a long time. We're going to be dead. Yeah, I mean, I've always known that. <laughs> like, I've known since I saw Bitcoin, I was like, oh, that is a major... What we're talking about is an epoch. That doesn't happen in the day. It definitely doesn't happen in a decade, right? We're going to be long dead. But the thing is, is if we could build the foundation today, and also the financial incentives are there to build that fine that foundation then maybe years down the line it will have paid off but like in our lifetime only the goons that find get rich schemas are gonna pay off this is gonna pay off for them but whether they sleep well at night or not that's that's a that jury's out on that but hmm. i don't know just some I'm just saying, I, I don't know, we've gotten on a hell of a tangent for you guys listening. I'm sorry. I hope it was thought provoking for you. Um, I don't even know how we got here. What the hell happened? Oh, stable coins is what we were talking about. And then it went to how would you market decentralization? Um, but let's let's get a little bit back on. To, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I if any of this is thought provoking, you should call into the main to the flagship show tomorrow if if you're into it. So anyways. Let's let's keep him. 
Let's keep All right, moving. so Swiss multi-billion dollar bank Vontabel launches regulated crypto custody by Helen Parts of Cointelegraph, 6,384 total views and 493 total shares. Switzerland's major private investment bank Vontabel has launched a crypto custody solution targeting banks and asset managers. Um, the Zurich-based Vontabel Bank is reportedly the third largest financial custody provider in Switzerland with 110.3 billion uh, CHF or 112.2 billion US dollars in assets in uh, under its actively developing asset management tool, uh, according to the company's financial report in 2017. So, okay. Cute. Nothing, what it is. Swiss is making uh, a financial assets for rich people. Like, I don't know. What, there's no, that's not even a new story in history. So, good job. To the Swiss. Moving on, uh, we might need to lightening it up a little bit for you listeners because we got on quite a tangent about the repercussions of te- technological leaps or the what is it called? The we'll call it this. We'll call it the slow saturation of technology. No, oh, it's like you're writing a paper, like a research paper. It's well, fine. I mean, research papers are cool sometimes, are they not? Yeah. Sometimes. Excuse me. <laughs> so Bitrix follows major crypto exchanges in launching over-the-counter trading platform. So if you don't know what OTC trading is, it is trading in such a way that it doesn't hit the block. Not the not that it doesn't hit the blockchain, but it doesn't affect the markets, right? So if I have millions of dollars and I want to buy millions of dollars of Bitcoin, if I hit the markets that everybody sees, then I can't get those millions of dollars without slippage, and I'm not going to get as much Bitcoin. I'm not going to get as much bang for my buck. What slippage is, is every time a uh, ask will go in for my $5 million, my big chunks that lead up to $5 million worth of Bitcoin, the price is going to go up, right? And each time that price goes up, I get less Bitcoin. So if I got a giant pile of money, I want to buy a giant pile of Bitcoin all at once. The OTC exchanges will present Bitcoin in bigger blocks to buy. Right. So it's basically like they're going to Costco. Right. Instead of buying TP off the shelf here at my local grocery store and I get 30 packs, 34 packs and end up paying 17 percent more for the toilet paper. I'll just go down to Costco and get a big bulk size so I can wipe my booty in comfort for a lot longer at a cheaper price. It's more like if you buy one uh, one roll of toilet paper, the next roll of toilet paper costs a penny more. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, that's a much better way of putting it. But they don't want slippage, right? So uh, <laughs> nobody wants slippage, am I right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> so Bitrix is, <laughs> sorry, Bitrix is not an over-the-counter exchange. That's that. All right, moving on. Let's do another. Speaking of slippage, uh, this article written by Helen Parts, which has 9,791 views. Uh, Intercontinental Exchange's digital asset platform Bact announces its first acquisition. So before they've even really done anything, they're acquiring things. Bact, the digital assets platform backed by the New York Stock Exchange, has acquired certain assets and futures commission merchant Rosenthal Collins Group. The acquisition was announced in a Medium post on Monday, January 14th. In the post, Bact CEO Kelly Loeffler hinted that the company's latest move is part of Bax's ambitious plans to become the first integrated and institutional-grade exchange-traded markets and custody solutions. Loeffler also stressed that the acquisition means that the company is slowing down operations while awaiting regulatory approval by the United States uh, Commodity Futures and Trading Commission, or CFTC, uh, for the launch of regulated trading in crypto markets. Loeffler stated, Our mission requires significant investment in technology to establish an innovative platform, as well as financial market expertise to deliver the most trusted fintech ecosystem for digital assets. Okay. That's it. I don't know. More stuff rich people get to do, and we don't. On to the next (laughs) On to the next article. I'm kidding. It's not that simple. You just got to be an accredited investor, most likely. So make $250,000 a year for more than one year or have more than a million dollars in assets. Um, Yeah, long long story. So 
Um, this next article uh, is written by Anna Berman. It's got 6,080 views. Major, not minor, but major Spanish energy company to use blockchain in renewable energy tracking. They're going to use blockchain, baby. Not which blockchain, not how, just use blockchain. We're going to sprinkle some blockchain in our shit, baby. Just like you sprinkle some, sprinkle some sugar on those cornflakes. We're going <laughs> to sprinkle some blockchain on our processes. Spain's major energy company, Iberdrola, 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 I'm not saying, I'm not saying that right, has started using blockchain to track renewable energy. Spanish energy news agency Europa Press reports on Monday, January 14th. The first trial was conducted in cooperation with Kutzabank, a local bank based in the Basque autonomous community that owns substantial part, owns a substantial part of Iberdrola's equity and its subsidiary. Cause this is all bull. Let me get to the conclusion here. Blockchain is actively used in energy sector worldwide. Mm, don't know about that. <laughs> um, for instance, German tech giant Siemens has also partnered with Energy Web Foundation to promote the use of decentralized technologies in the sector. As well, the Department of Energy in the United States has recently granted $4.8 million for university research into technologies, including Bitcoin. Oh, this article seemed like a bunch of nothing. <laughs> what? It doesn't seem like we got no information from any of that. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I just wanna know who this person is. Who? Anna Berman. Who is Anna Berman? <laughs> oh, you're looking into our background now because that article was that so article bad of any information whatsoever. Air. Um, hmm. Where is Anna Berman? I think I'm going to watch any given Sunday today to prepare for the Kansas City Chiefs championship game on Sunday. Dude, everybody wants the Chiefs to win, right? Because <gasps> the Patriots are getting old. Can we pause for a second? Yeah, sure. I've been a Kansas City Chiefs fan since I was four years old. So you're waiting. You've been waiting for this? I've never seen an, an AFC championship game that had my Kansas City Chiefs in it. I also, until last weekend, never witnessed Kansas City win a playoff game at home. I mm. am over the moon. My quarterback, Mr. Patrick Holmes, is from mm. my alum, alumnus, Texas yeah. Tech University, where I graduated yeah. and spent okay. way too much money to learn sure. math, of all things. Sure. I am over the moon right now internally. That's pretty good. I'm glad that my uh, alma mater won Clemson. Oh, yeah. Clemson beat the pants off of Alabama. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Y'all's quarterback is killing it right now. Yeah. I looked at his Instagram page the other day. I feel sorry for his girlfriend. She's got a lot of competition now. Really? Yeah, man. That guy is killing it. He's on top of the world. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, everybody's like, if if the NFL didn't have rules against the uh, drafting of like college players he'd until be in there. Like three years, yeah. yeah, he'd be first first pick. Yeah, you can see the stress in his girlfriend's forehead whenever I look at his pictures on Instagram. <laughs> like, she's like, dang, <laughs> you better. She's like, please marry me, please, please oh, marry man. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, I have to. I have to look at his Instagram now. Please. Is it? Oh no. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, um, sorry, get off topic there. What were we even talking about? Oh, crypto shit. Uh, is it my turn to read the news, or is it your turn? I'm pretty sure it should be my turn. Let's yeah, yeah, see. it's your turn. I'm on Wednesday. New Zealand police confirm investigation into alleged $3.6 million hack of Cryptopia. William Suberg, Cointelegraph, 5,300. Why don't we have more news sources? Like, it seems like the only news source we trust is really Cointelegraph to not have, like, any slant. Yeah, but they have a major slant. They have a major trying to get paid slant. 
All right, here's a call to action for the audience. This is all we do is we aggregate RSS feeds of these different news areas. If you feel like our news is a little too mainstream, because that's what we started out to be. We wanted to know what mainstream media was putting into the ether. But now I think Jesse and I, six, seven months into doing this, are a little bit tired of the same type of articles. Regulations, people getting busted, regulations, exchanges doing stuff that you know, is it really interesting and doesn't say anything about the fundamentals of any of this tech. So if you have new, if you have news resources that you use and RSS feeds that are reliable, you can join our Slack and submit them to us and we can get more, a wider range of news. Cause right now at this point, it's like I'm tired of reading about regulations and like stuff that is not really as interesting as, and sparks our brains as much as that philosophical stuff we just went into. So that's a call to action. Join the Slack, the Bitcoinpodcast.com. Hit the Slack button. Join it. Say, yo, D, yo, Jesse. I heard you were looking for better news, more variable news. Here you go. Check it out. And I'll throw that RSS feed onto our news aggregation and we can we can get it popping. Sounds All right, good. Jesse, keep going. All right, here we go. Check in. Uh, so Cryptopia got hacked for 3.6 million. Exchange shut down its websites on January 14th, saying it detected malicious activity. Um, I saw that, uh, was it Binance mm -hmm. or some other exchange, um, I guess, froze some transactions that Absolutely. they saw came from it. A ton. Um, so anyway, uh, significant losses. I'm not sure if the... Exchange is going to compensate people for their lost um, tokens, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So. We shall see. All right. Oh, damn. You got my article for Thursday and Wednesday. I will <gasps> have to replace that. So this one right here. Um, following bankruptcy filing, mining firm... Oh, no, this is the one I put here. Okay, no, this is okay. Yeah, this is okay. All right, we're good. Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot I did Thursday, Wednesday, right? We're good. Following bankruptcy filing, mining firm Gigawatt reportedly closes day-to-day -day operations. Perfect. Helen Parts, Cointelegraph, 4,104 total views, 158 total shares. Um, basically, they're shut down. So, bankruptcy <laughs> filing. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're done. They're done. It's over. The former top five crypto mining firm reportedly notified its clients that any cryptocurrency remaining in customer wallets will be available for, for withdrawal until March via the gigawatt dashboard. But, uh, yep, they're out. I think this is documentary worthy. How do you go Why? from a top five crypto mining pool, crypto mining operation? Like, how does the well run dry? It's they not, pulled profits real fast. Oof. I mean, we get that, I but I want—I want to know the breadcrumbs, baby. I want to know what led to the point where, hey, we're making money hand over foot. This is uh, spotty adi do delicious. And to wait a second, we are done. <laughs> wait, <laughs> like you know what I mean? It seemed like it happened so abruptly. I would love to know. Sorry, go it was, on. Uh, it was a cash grab, right? It's a good like old-fashioned cash grab, see? It's like a, like an ICO version of uh, crypto mining. We were here, and now we're not. We yep. took your money, and we bought miners, and then we took that money, and now we're not here anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I see. It's a good old-fashioned cash grab, see? <laughs> yeah, fine. they're screwed. So, uh... So U.S. state of Washington, where Gigawatt allegedly owns $300,000 in utility payments, um, started looking into using the former mining facilities for other computing intensive applications like data analytics or artificial intelligence. Oh, um, that's a bad move. But yeah, I wouldn't do that. That's uh, so, yeah, they owe they even owe some utility bills. Mm. So, all right, cool. Moving on. Survey. Oh, wait, there's two lessons we need to say. Um, okay. Just one lesson from the Cryptopia thing. We're going to mm -hmm. say it. We'll say it every time. We've said it probably eight times in the last year, the last okay. seven months. Don't store your money on an exchange. 
unless put it in you a have wallet. balls of steel. Yeah, unless you have balls of steel and won't cry when you lose it. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Survey. U.S. investors that sold BTC lost $1.7 billion. Many don't intend to deduct losses. Adrian Zmazinski, Cointelegraph, 8,135 total views, 185 total shares. Crypto investors in the U.S. who sold their Bitcoin holdings lost $1.7 billion, but many do not plan to deduct the losses. A survey conducted by personal finance company Credit Karma published on January 15th. Damn, credit they surveyed, card watching crypto. They surveyed um, 1,009 American Bitcoin investors over the age of 18 in November 2018. Uh, slight majority of Americans, 53% plan to report their Bitcoin gains and losses for their taxes. 19% undecided. 35% uh, sold their crypto at a loss and will not report their losses on their tax returns. There you go. Hot Damn. And taxes getting fuzzy. Um, you know what I was thinking about when you said balls of steel, right before we get into Thursday's news. Why did no villains think to kick Wolverine in the nuts? Like, uh, his balls aren't made of adamantium, but his bones down there are, so like his pelvic bones. So if yeah. you kick hard enough, you could yeah. do some damage there. You could bring that little man down. Doesn't he have the um, regeneration um, thing, though? It would still be pretty painful for like a split second. And that split second, you might be able to pull something off, I think. I, I forget the comic books, but like, is Wolverine supposed to have the same regenerative factor as Deadpool? He is, right? Yes, they both regenerate really, really fast. So then it's fine. I guess. I mean, but they still feel pain. He just had to be a gritty dude to get kicked in the balls really hard and just keep going with it. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about you, Jesse, but that brings me to my knees. I'm done for I'm done for 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 the immediate future if I get hit in the old cojones. Uh, I can uh can say that I have never been kicked that hard there in a long time. Okay. I haven't either, but it hurts. So, <laughs> anyways, I didn't mean to go on a tangent there. I was just surprised that was never thought of as a tactic that a bad guy would use. Uh, speaking of tactics, this next article written by Helen Parts has 7,191 views. Um, MIT Stanford researchers to fund a new globally scalable cryptocurrency, Unit E. There it is. It's the new Bitcoin. The new Bitcoin, baby. A group of researchers from the top United States universities have announced the launch of a globally scalable decentralized payments network, according to the press release. <laughs> yeah. Distributed technologies research, get baby. It? Unity. Unity. Unite. Unite. Uh, uh, or Unity. Like Unity. Unity. Oh, um, what a great name. Yeah. So... Joey Krug, a member of the DTR Foundation, which is the Distributed Technologies Researchers um, Foundation, uh, has told reporters that their goal for the cryptocurrency's processing time is 10,000 transactions per second. So, Unity! I would, uh, I would get Unity. I'm sold on the name sold? alone. You're going to go get it? You know what I have noticed is creeping back is now that there's new year, new me, new marketing budgets, like... There's new tokens that are claiming to be the new Bitcoin again. It's great. It's like, it's like a, it's like 2000, it's like diet 2018. Like we're getting a little bit of the bullshit, but not, but it's still there. It's good to know the that. floodgates still haven't there. reopened. Yeah. Anna Alexander writes this next one. Crypto, it's got 3,121 views, so no one cares about it. Crypto exchange Coinbase acquires San Francisco based tech startup Blockspring. So Coinbase is doing things with their giant pile of money. Let's figure it out. Major cryptocurrency exchange and wallet provider Coinbase has acquired Andreessen Horowitz's backed, backed tech startup Blockspring. So Blockspring produces tools that enable developers to automatically gather and process information from application programming interfaces. Um, so 
automation through APIs. In 2015, the company raised $3.4 million in a round led by venture capital firm Andreessen Howard. $3.4 million in a seed stage investment. I sound like, uh, what's his name there? Yo. Ugh. What's that rapper's name on the West Coast? Um, I don't know. He talks like that. Talks like a Tasmanian devil, kind of. No, nope. Don't know who you're Damn. talking about. You don't listen to enough rap music. I, I obviously don't listen to that specific person. Oh, what's his name? Anyway, too short? I don't think it's too short. Damn it. Anyways, last month. Uh, following the acquisition, Blockstream will reportedly continue operating as an independent entity. While any changes to its businesses will not be binding on the company's current new customers. So if you are using Blockspring, nothing's going to happen to you yet. The application revealed that Coinbase's Biddle software as a service solutions would include software for managing, buying, selling, storing, transacting, exchanging, sending, and receiving virtual currency. That's a lot. Later in December, it was reported that Coinbase decided to drop its application. In August, Coinbase acquired San Francisco-based startup Distributed Systems, Inc., which works on decentralized identity solutions. With a new acquisition, Coinbase will purportedly work toward a decentralized identity system that will, quote, let you prove that you own an identity or that you have a relationship with the Social Security Administration without making a copy of that identity. Ooh, zero knowledge proves. According to Coin Market Cap data, Coinbase ranked 39th largest exchange in the world with nearly 68 milli in daily trade volume as of press time. So, uh, Blockspring, automated APIs, baby, coming at you. Last article on Thursday, then you could think about how you're going to listen to the other shows on the network. <laughs> Founder, oh, sorry, another one by Anna Alexander. It has 4,784 total views. The founder of Ethereum and Consensus, Joe Lubin, joins board of directors of crypto startup Eris X. X, X, X. The founder of blockchain tech company Consensus, Joseph B. Lubin, has been appointed to the board of directors of the cryptocurrency startup Iris X. The news has revealed an, an official press release. So, Cryptocurrency exchange IRSX is a reboot of futures market IRS exchange originally established in 2010 and December 2018. Uh, IRS, I, I hope I'm saying IRS right. E-R-I-S, is that IRS or Eris? Maybe Eris, because Eris. Iris is normally I-R-I-S. Yeah, that's right. Eris, Eris X. Raised $27.5 million from Fidelity Investments. Ooh, that's a big name. And NASDAQ Ventures in 2019, Eris X is expected to, to be offering both spot trading in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, and futures markets. So it looks like the most sure ways to make... It looks like the most assured way to make money in crypto is being an exchange. Right? Mm -hmm. that looks like that's it like mining is tough right mining is really tough you've got to buy a lot of hardware it's not exactly um even for tech savvy people it's a it's a major learning curve and then the sustainability even more so because it's always a challenge on fixing the hardware on making sure the software is running correctly that's a challenge but the the bang up sure way to make money in crypto is to launch an exchange Make it fun and easy to use, and then just watch the money pour in. So, there we go. That's your nugget of go make money from from D Demteric. So that's it, Jesse. No more news. No moss. I like today's show. I like when we get a little philosophical about things. Get a little deep. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, you got anything you want to add? Nope. You got anything hot going on this weekend? Nope. I don't think so. Me either. Just going to watch this Chiefs game and hope that we beat the Patriots. Oh my God. I think I'm going to cry, man. If we win, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry, and then I'm going to submit my tears to Gillette and ask them to put it in a commercial. Oof. What? 
Yeah. Why'd you make that? I watched that. I watched that ad. Ooh, tread softly, for you mm-hmm. tread on people's dreams. Are you even gonna go there? No. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't go there either. That's oof. <laughs> no, ooh, I'm just kidding. I'll go there. Mm-hmm. No, somebody actually posted like a concise way of putting it. It's like um, um, capitalism there. found a way to monetize. Um, I guess, um, like current social, like socio political atmosphere, and like you know, right now it's it's about feminism. So they had to market themselves as the the only razor that you know is supposedly empathetic to the cause of women, which it's it's a company. It's like okay. I don't know. Capitalism feigning empathy for more market share. That's all it comes down to. And some people are really taking taking hook and line and sinker and like actually trying to like fight over the the righteousness or the uh or the scandalousness of the actual advertisement when it's yeah. just like it's just it's just another way to grab your attention. Just don't. What happened to funny commercials? Don't shave. (laughs) You save money. At the Bitcoin podcast, we don't shave, so neither should you. Buy our our non-shave lotion for your face. Why do you need non-shave lotion? Because your face is itchy, and the lotion will make it cool for about three seconds, and you won't be scratching your face during those three seconds. So, if you want to save money on razors, and uh... yeah, but if you want to, this is like the perfect time for like uh, for um, Bosch. Is it Bosch for like Johnson and Johnson just to come up and be like, you know, everybody talks about razors nowadays. Why don't you just yeah. put lotion on your face? <laughs> Why don't you just put lotion on your face and grow a beard and don't shave and save money? <laughs> yep. See, that would be a funny advertisement, but I bet you nobody's going to do that. Nobody's gonna be like, I just take the. But then you could you could actually hop on the feminist train. You say like, you know who else doesn't shave their face? Exactly, your woman can use this lotion too. Women don't shave their face. (laughs) Your women can use this lotion as well. Yeah, no, it would be funny. Somebody from pharmaceutical company should do that. And then you see like one dude talking to another dude and one dude has a cleanly shaven face and he's like, bro, what are you doing, man? What are you? You shave? Oh, my God. (laughs) You take that money for the razors and like like there's like a segment, like a scene where the guy goes, he looks at his face in the mirror, wakes up in the morning and then he smiles and shakes his head side to side like. I'm not going to shave and then takes it the money that he was going to shave and then gives it to his wife and she goes to get Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just like, don't buy razors. Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> Dude, what other thing? Oh man, we should start like a commercial production company. If we were like, uh, you know what we should do? Uh, take little snippets of starving children. But instead of an ad for feeding them with money, it would just be like an ad uh, for aluminum foil. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) wait, what? Just like, just play to the hearts of humanity. You know, like, like do you, do you like seeing this baby starve? Neither do we. Um, You should buy (laughs) buy aluminum foil. You should buy Reynolds aluminum foil because. We care. And <laughs> our foil face. saves food longer in your fridge. And so you waste food, less. That you're going to eat. You waste less food, which in turn means oh my God. these babies may eat someday. <laughs> someday. So buy, 
<laughs> yo, dude. Yo, can we just do that? Can that be our job? Can we it's just, just make making heart wrenching commercials for different products that really shouldn't be making a heart wrenching exactly. commercial. <laughs> that's like that's like a lot of uh, Japanese companies. Have you seen like those Asian commercials? Those are so sad. No, and then the, the product on. they're advertising has nothing to do with the sort at all. But you feel so sad and you feel like, okay, I guess I'll buy your product because that advertisement <laughs> was so good. I feel obligated to buy your product now because if I don't, I feel like I'm contributing to evil in the world. It's like watching like a mini ad, uh, a mini Disney yeah. short or a mini Pixar short and then there's like a product at the end. Yeah. What's yeah. another controversial thing? Like, oh, um, what about like, it feels really bad to trivialize really heart wrenching topics, though. Like, I don't know. Let's let's do let's try and do one more before we leave the people. Uh, <laughs> You're the day. one trying to do new ones. Yeah. So we got um, children starving, and we have. Okay, so let's think of another one. Um, what do you? This why are you? Terrible. Why are you leaving me hanging on this? You're the one because this that is had the so. Idea. It's so funny, but it's so politically <laughs> incorrect that it's so funny. Man, look, we're a comedy show now. This is not just the headers. This is just the headers comedy. We've always corner. had a good time on this show. <laughs> I feel like I like to have good times on my show because you can't have a good time anywhere anymore. I watch comedians that are stressed out because they're like, I can't even make jokes. <laughs> There yeah. was this, there's this Indian comedian who I just saw this story. It just made me kind of sad. An Indian comedian was requested by a Southeast Asian like student committee at a university to come and do a to come do a bit to come do a show for them. Sure. And when he started making jokes, they were racially charged jokes because I mean it's comedy, and he got kicked off stage. Like the leaders of the little student council came onto the stage and were like, we don't think you have the right to be talking about things like this. And he was like, are you kidding? I'm a com- I'm a comedian. Like I make jokes. These are these are jokes. And it was so funny. It just was like and so I feel like if we can't be funny anywhere anymore, we're like what the hell, man? So on my show, on the show, not in the slack you know who I'm talking to. I repeat, not in the Slack group, but on the show, I mean, we joke around. Can we make a joke about like, okay, what the what we'd be selling is is corn chips, um, but we should talk about the, the over-politicized uh, southern border of the United States right now. Can you think of something real quick, Jesse? What about Mexico? No, I didn't say Mexico. I said southern border. What are you talking about? There's there's only one southern border. Okay, you're right. I did that does mean Mexico, but that's <laughs> <laughs> you say like we at Fritos support the wall. Broad careful now. We support the broad <laughs> <laughs> We support broad and bold lines and that's why we separate ourselves from the rest of the corn chips on the corn chip aisle and if you're gonna build a barrier to tastiness to lock in that tastiness is just start with Fritos chips support the wall (laughs) You know, while I was in Mexico <laughs> watching news, all they did was make fun of Trump and how he wants to build a wall, but then play over and over this commencement speech where he said, if there's a wall, you got to do whatever you got to do to go through the wall. You go under it, you go around it, you go over it, you got to get through the wall. And they would play that nonstop and just like shit on Trump. <laughs> like that's how much... <laughs> That's how much Me- Mexican news leans far. Dude, that's away. a commercial all in and of itself. It's like a five second run for Oval Riddenbacher. Hey, you like popcorn? Don't like Trump? Neither do we. By Oval Riddenbacher. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. 
Orville would go out of business like in a week. You think so? Trump would like pass like high tariffs on corn being used for popcorn, <laughs> specifically with companies whose name starts with O. Yeah. Terrible organization. Simply terrible. As uh, There's so many better popcorn flavors. So much popcorn is available in the stores that you don't have to get overridden by her. Simply terrible. Terrible people there. I'm kidding. Um... I wish I was invited to the the um the dinner that he gave the football the Clemson football players in the White eaten? House. Would you have eaten? Uh, of course, dude. Look at how many Big Macs there were on that table. <laughs> I, I would have gone. I would have gone to town on those. <laughs> just like put a whole arm down, just like you're scoop the, them into you're my the shirt. Happiest person in the room, like sucking your fingers, like mm. they put extra Big Mac sauce on these because it's the White House. Oh man. <laughs> Mm, this is so Yo, good. Big Mac sauce. <laughs> Don't even joke. You see how the lettuce is hanging off? It doesn't usually do this. This is White House Big Mac. This is this is, <laughs> comes this out is of the, the fun. This is premium. It's still kind of warm. That's how I know. That's how I know. Oh, it's good. Jesus. They use real romaine lettuce instead yeah. of like the tissue paper cut out of green stuff. Mm. Mm. Well, we should probably wrap it up because we haven't actually talked about crypto in like 15 minutes. Yeah. I'm sorry, audience. <laughs> um, let's wrap this shit. So if if this is your first time listening to Just the Headers, then you got an idea of how lax th- that we keep it with this show. Um, we are looking at diversify our news. Still looking at you, Joe. Um, so we can give you guys a little bit more of a wider swath of fundamental technological differences uh without trying to um be burdensome um let's see what else uh the bitcoin podcast network is a network of shows uh where we try to launch a slew of crypto uh currency and blockchain technology related um content and we hope that it's a one-stop shop for you Uh, So what you do get with the Bitcoin Podcast Network is humor, objective viewpoints on things, theories, thought exercises, fun conversation. What you don't get with the Bitcoin Podcast Network is hopium um, and outlandish claims and quote unquote predictions. Uh, We do prognosticate from time to time. But we don't make any bold predictions unless we're making fun of people that make bold predictions. Uh, Jesse, you got anything you you want to add? Nope, I'm I'm good. Thanks That's everybody for true. watching the show. That's not true. Jesse, the man broke. Launch. He runs a stream on Twitch.tv slash the Mexican Filipino that he refuses to talk about on the show. I don't know why you do that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> No, I talk about it sometimes. I'm putting you on Front Street, man. You got to pimp oh. yourself out these days. If you don't pimp oh, yourself man. out, who's going to do it? Who's going to pimp you? Nobody's going to pimp me out. I have to be the one to pimp myself out. You've got to be the pimp and the what the pimp pimps what the in 2019. Pimps. Oh, okay. Anyways, twitch.tv slash the Mexican Filipino. Uh, if you're offended by the word Mexican Filipino, Jesse is a Mexican Filipino, so it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you can say and think it. Um, that's it, man. The Bitcoin Podcast dot com, the Bitcoin Podcast dot network is going to take you to the network of shows. Tune in if you want to join conversations, which has quote unquote been quoted the, sorry, this has our Slack has been quoted the most laid back Slack in all of crypto, which it is. Um, you can press the Slack button on that website and you can join up. If you do join up, you will be given access to call-ins on our flagship show, the Bitcoin podcast. Um, it's a new format that we're working out where people from our community can call into the show to just hang out, talk with us, uh, bring subjects to talk about, ask us questions. Um, we're really liking that format because it gives us like a closer ear impulse with 
the people that are listening to our shows. So please go do that. Um, one last chance, Jesse. You got anything else to add? Mm, nope. All, All right. right. Yeah. I'll I'll have an announcement maybe in like a couple months or something about oh, something that I've been working on. But yeah. Oh, is it it's, top it's, secret status? It's top secret status right now. <gasps> um, that's why it's taking a little bit of time from the stream. Like I just got back yesterday, but I haven't felt motivated enough to stream mm -hmm. yesterday because I'm working on this thing. So we'll see <gasps> where it goes. Yeah, you can know. At some point. Want. I'll ask you sure. in like a week. Sure. This is exciting. I'm more excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Well, I like when you like, because you're, I like when you get to the grindstone because you are a grinder. And I don't mean that. I mean that like you work hard. So. I try. Um, From time to time. <laughs> uh, so that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Play...